Hey, what's up guys? BJ Dell back with a new weekly art challenge review video. Last week's word was culinary, so let's see what you guys came up with. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the video. Today's video is all about the weekly challenge word from last week, which was culinary. So let's see what you guys came up with. First one up is Amanda's today, and Amanda did this adorable, cute strawberry, and I think this one is really fantastic. So you can see here, she didn't use any heavy outlines. She actually let the colors do the work of the outlines, which I've talked about in some previous videos. It has more of a, a painterly style, but I do kind of like just the overall fuzziness of everything. It's got a really kind of muted, uh, just natural look to it, and it really adds to the just overall cuteness of the piece. Uh, the eyes and the mouth are super adorable, the way that she did the highlights around the edges here, and then the, the bottom lip here, and on top of the eyebrows, I think works really well. I do love the heavy shadows here too, on the leaves. This heavy darkness here really lets you know that the light source is coming in from down here. Plus it almost has a tilted feel to it to where since there's not a heavy shadow here that these aren't casting this you know heavy shadow along the front of the strawberry. You can tell it's kind of tilted back a little bit and it really makes the, the face stand out with having that darker color there. Um, the one thing I probably would kind of fix a little bit is you've got really kind of some smooth lines here for the transition between the strawberry and the leaves. And then when you get down here to the bottom of the strawberry, uh, it, it kind of gets a little bit rough around here. So I would clean that up a little bit just to make it a little bit smoother. I think the overall piece reads that it has like a nice smooth, you know, blurriness to it. So I would get that cleaned up just a little bit so it's not as rough. But I do love this background, how you've got this uh, faded color. I think that complements the overall design really well. I love the color choices and how they tie in together and just that overall fade really makes the strawberry itself pop. So just absolutely fantastic. Uh, the other thing too, and this you might be limited because of the iPad you have so and the, the canvas size that you use. Uh, if you guys don't know about the limitations with Procreate and the iPads, definitely check out my previous video about which iPad should I buy for art in 2019. But if you have the available layers to use, this is what I would recommend in this case. You'll see here where the, the leaf part and the strawberry part meet. You've got a lot of parts here to where the, the red of the strawberry, the pink of the strawberry is actually going into the leaves here. Uh, likewise, down here, you've got some of the greens going into the front of the strawberry here. And I'm assuming that you know came from when you were trying to line them up and kind of blend them together using, I'm assuming, the smudge tool. Um, that they kind of ran in together and to free up that from happening i would recommend just doing like the strawberry layer all on one layer with the you know the colors and then do this leaf and the the stem and everything do that on a separate layer uh, that's underneath and behind the strawberry layer that way when you start to blend stuff in it's not gonna take these colors and kind of merge them together and it's not going to get this overlapping colors so it's going to give you a little bit of a cleaner look um, that would be the the only thing there that i would recommend if you have the available layers you know do that especially with this painterly style uh, without using the heavy outlines you don't get that kind of safety net that breaks up your colors they're going to be butted up against each other so using you know that technique is a, a little hack and a way around not having you know the the guidance of those lines to kind of cover up where the colors meet together but fantastic job amanda thanks so much for sharing that this week uh, next up is diego and diego did an adorable egg uh, this one reminded me a lot of amanda's piece too just because of the the overall look not using the heavy outlines once again letting the color flats and the colors of the piece do the work of the outlines and i think this is really well done i love just the the really subtle shadows here that you kind of build up that three-dimensional look of 
the egg and you've got the uh, yolk in the inside here that you've got a nice highlight to and it's really believable and once again like just the, the most subtle shadow here that really kind of makes it look three-dimensional but in a really just illustrated way it's not you know too realistic it still has that illustrated cute feeling to it and I think it's really well done I also love the shadow that you put underneath and you've got it you know a little bit heavier up here and back here and I just think it works really good. Uh, same thing with Amanda's. You've got some really kind of smooth lines coming around in certain places. But then up here, they kind of start jumping and getting a little jaggedy. So I would probably go ahead and either use the smudge tool here to kind of blend them in a little bit so they have a little bit more of a uh, natural flow and don't have that jaggedness to them. Either that or if you go in with the the eraser and throw it on airbrush and then you could actually clean those up a little bit. Um, on this one, since everything is flat here, I could actually go in with the uh, color of your background here to kind of show you what I'm talking about. We'll go to airbrush and let's see, there we go. So if you just bring this here and maybe, are we on the right layer? Yeah, I think so, there we go. And just kind of bring this around like this just so it's a little bit more just flowy, I guess, and, and not as hard edged. I would kind of keep that soft mutedness to it so you don't get, you know, really hard edges on there. But overall, I think it's really fantastic. So great job, Diego. Thanks so much for sharing that one this week. Uh, next up is Crystal's. And Crystal did a chef cat with a plate of salmon, and I think this one works really well. I love the, the use of different backgrounds. You've got this squared green background here, followed by this you know round circle, which breaks stuff up, draws your attention into the cat, and then it also has that line pattern, which I think works really well. And if you followed along with my tutorials before, uh, you know that I use a lot of shadows. I use a lot of highlights. And Crystal here did not use that many. You've got some really subtle shadows here and you've got like a really subtle shadow here which you can barely see and it's really thin down here but for the most part it's pretty much much just color flats and i like it for this design really it depends on what type of design you're going for what type of uh, you know, aesthetic you want from the design, who the design is aimed at, you know, what audience are you going for? Sometimes you might not need, you know, the shadows and the highlights and you might do something basic like this. I know in my, my last video, I showed the, the Fudo Cats book that I did and I said that, that was based on previous uh, line of cats that I did. And in that line, I did not use any shadows. I did not use any highlights just because I wanted it to be really simple, really basic. And Crystal went with kind of the same uh, idea here. And I think it works really, really well. Uh, I wouldn't have gone with anything extra or thrown anything in more as far as highlights and shadows because I think the uh, the look that she achieves here is really, really good. And plus, I love the uh, the plate of salmon and the, you know, the chef hat just ties everything into that culinary theme. And I think it's adorable. So great job, Crystal. Thanks for sharing this week. Uh, next up is Michael. And Michael took the culinary theme, the zombie route, because they love to eat brains. And I think this one was really cute. Um, the reason why I picked this one this week is he's got really, really strong line work. And I've talked about this before in videos as well, going for that heavy edged line weight on the outer edge of your design and then using the thinner lines on the inside. This line weight works really, really well. And I do like that the ears are just a tad bit thinner in line weight than the jawline coming down here and then the brow coming up here. I think it works fantastic. Uh, the overall color scheme is great too. I know that he had talked about, you know, having a hard time deciding on colors and I love just going with that green hue. So you got a green background, you've got this green pattern here. And even for the lines, uh, this is one thing I'm a fan of too, not using black all the time and tying in your line color to the rest of the design. Sometimes it, it doesn't make it as harsh and it makes it a little bit more natural looking. And I do like the way that he did it with this. And I think the, uh, the colors are really wise choice. The, and the pink of the brains just makes everything pop. Um, also here too, if you watched my previous let's draw videos, and if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that sometimes I'll post the drawings from that over on Instagram. And I'll add in a background for Instagram that is not actually featured in the video. 
Uh, number one, I don't include it in the video just to kind of save time on the videos, but uh, I do it on Instagram when I post the photos just to kind of add a little bit more to the design, make it a little bit more interesting. Sometimes I'll put, you know, just a, a square or rectangle. Sometimes I'll add in, you know, a circle or, or lines. And I think this geometric pattern that he went with here and kind of how it's broken up is done really well. Uh, it, it gives it a nice just vibe and an overall look and I love how it's this narrow he didn't go super wide with it and it's more narrow here and it's based around kind of where this brain centers in so once again it kind of draws the attention in to the center of the piece and to that brain and I think it is fantastic once again the color choice is great and I love that that background design is is in that same color palette and it's it's just really good so thanks so much for sharing that this week michael and last but not least is carl and carl just kind of snuck in under the wire for this one uh this is a really good one carl said he's new to digital art and pretty much art in general and i think he's definitely on the right track um this one when i first looked at it especially with the kind of square presentation it really reminds me of something that you would see as like the the logo for an app and you know if you're searching through your phone and you know all the the different uh, tiles are there this kind of reminds me of an app tile so uh, number one love the background this sunburst design works really well i like how it kind of uh, fades into here lighter into the center where the character is you've got the character in almost like a, a jumping like freeze frame pose position uh, so he's got some dynamic motion to him and then that sunburst design really adds to that dynamic pose I just think it's really, really well done. Um, for the character, I love this kind of short and stumpy, almost geometric look to him. I think that's really cool. And uh, the other thing with the geometric tie-in, uh, you'll not see this a lot in this type of artwork. And it's something that stood out to me and I do like in this case. You'll see he used you know, pretty much regular color flats here, but then to do the shadows and the highlights, he actually used a super, super thin line here and traced out the, the highlights and shadows. I've seen some artists do this in the past, but it's not something you see a lot. And I think because of, like I said, that almost geometric look of the character, I think that works really well. You've got angles to the character here, but then you also have these angles on the inside that's accentuated by that line. Uh, if you went any heavier with that line, I don't think it would work, but the fact that that is so small and it's such a thin line, I think it really adds a lot to the design, um, makes it really more interesting. And I like too that you didn't do it everywhere. You've got a you highlight here on the, the piece of, I think it's salmon here, uh, and you didn't outline that, but these shadows in here are outlined, and I love that there's actually multiple thin lines here to do the shadow work. Uh, I think that's just really cool. It almost makes a pattern to it and it, it really draws the, the eye in. Uh, same thing here with this white. It's not outlined like that and I think it would have been too close to do that. So using that sparingly where you did, I think was a really wise design choice. I do also like the, the brush used for the character itself. It's kind of this rough edge. I'm not sure exactly which one used, uh, but I, I really like that. Like I said, the, the character itself has that dynamic pose to it, and I think that adds a lot of energy to having that, that rough outline with the brush that you chose. Uh, just really adds to it. So uh, thanks for adding that this week, Carl. So those are the five designs that I picked out this week. Just want to thank you to everyone that participated and especially thanks to the guys that allowed me to show their art this week. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching and a special thanks to all the people that submitted designs this week over on Facebook. The group is called Keep Creating a Learn, Draw, Share Art Community. If you guys have not yet joined, the link is in the description below. That's where you post your weekly art challenges that you do. You could also post other artwork too. It can be digital, it can be traditional. It's just a really cool place to meet new people, show off your work, get feedback, give feedback, and we want you guys to join if you haven't already. Also, if you like today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. So last week's word was culinary, and this week's word is automobile. 
We'll see what you guys can do with that. Me personally, I hate drawing automobiles. I hate drawing cars. I hate drawing trucks. If it's something that a client requests, you know, I kind of have to do it, but it's not the most fun thing to do in the world. Uh, so I want to see what you guys can do. Are you going to go realistic with it? Are you going to go cartoony? You know, give them a personality and a background, go the Pixar cars route. I know you guys can do it. So I want to see what you're capable of. As for me, I can be found online, bjdell.com, as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.